Welcome, Adam's children. Please make yourself comfortable as we start the sermon, which is the next installation in my cartography series where we look at certain groups from a bird's eye perspective. It is interesting what kind of insights we glean when looking at a map, and we do so this time, focusing on the formidable gunner mercenary group. I have also enlisted the help of an assistant, a newcomer to Adam's flock. He doesn't really talk, but those tracks let him get anywhere and he has been scouting the Commonwealth and helping me hone my maps. Say hello to the cartographer. You will be seeing more of him in coming cartography videos. Gunners are scattered through the Commonwealth, and they bridge the worlds between raiders and clean-cut mercenaries. They aren't afraid to raid a settlement or kidnap unfortunate souls, but they are also respectable enough that merchants, caravans, and individuals will pay to employ their services to protect, guard, and escort. Along the way, I want to see if the information we come across will help us answer a question that has been asked in the Fallout community before and is posed by the man of 1,000 faces, Deacon. Deacon point blank asks this question when he says, who funds the gunners? No one knows. And so I hope we can go through the lore to see if we can find one or maybe more than one answer to this question. So crank up the rads and load your radium rifle because these guys don't take prisoners. All right, so the first thing I always like to do in these videos is to take a look at the areas where you can always find gunners, their bases, holdings, or what have you. Outlined in blue are the areas that are under direct gunner control. So if you are within this shaded area, then you will likely be spotted and attacked by gunners. There are some interesting patterns when looking at this distribution. Gunners have a pretty heavy presence in the south, with three large locations. But noticeably, there are no gunners located in the Glowing Sea area. This makes sense, since gunners are kinda just fancy raiders. That is to say that they will kidnap, extort, and kill on sight like raiders. But they have a chain of command, a communication network, and at least a certain level of respect by those in the Commonwealth who can contract their services. These contracts span several activities such as armed escort of caravans, guarding locations, and technology recovery or salvage missions. The lack of any other groups other than Adam's Holy Folk in the Glowing Sea mean that normal raiding activities can't be performed, and most of their normal contracted activities are also not really applicable. We will see more of this in a second, but gunners like to establish small recon bases, normally in elevated areas, where they can watch and gather intel. The lack of people and the harshness of living in the Glowing Sea means that there is not a great reason to establish recon bases in this area either. There is one location in the Glowing Sea that could possibly garner the interest of the gunners themselves or be of interest to someone with enough money to contract their services. And that location is the Sentinel site, which is widely believed to be the actual target of the bomb that created the Glowing Sea. We will discuss this more in depth when I go over areas that could be of potential interest to the gunners, but let's keep looking at where we actually find gunner groups. Unsurprisingly, gunners have a chunk of downtown Boston under their control, covering the areas of the Mass Bay Medical Center, the Ticker Tape Lounge, and Pinnacle High Rise, along with some surrounding destroyed buildings. We will take a look at this hotly contested area more in a bit, but I find it interesting that there is a distinct lack of gunner positions in the western portion of Boston. This isn't for a lack of places or beneficial sites, like the Boston Police Rationing Site that has, to this day, a good amount of food supplies. Perhaps they don't want to come into potential conflict with Diamond City or its security force, since the wealthy residents of Diamond City do regularly contract gunner services. Out west, gunner positions are quite sparse, with only one medium-sized base at the Mass Pike Interchange Although, as we will see later on, there is some interest at Fort Hagen. This area of the Commonwealth has some sites that could be of interest. Fort Hagen, the Federal Ration Stockpile, the Mayoral Shelter, a Poseidon Energy Hydroelectric Plant, and ArcJet Systems. So it is a bit curious that we don't see more gunners. Just north of downtown Boston is another area quite devoid of gunners. Although there are more groups of raiders and super mutants here, in addition to Bunker Hill, which is an important trading hub. 
The Northeast has a decent number of places where gunners can be found, but this area is more complicated than it seems because it is an area undergoing drastic changes. Finally, the northern, notably the northwest corner of the map, is completely devoid of gunners. In fact, there are a number of unmarked gunner recon bases that are all established on sections of the elevated highway that seem to mark the northern extent of the gunner's reach. There is somewhat of a natural line connecting these recon bases and seem to show the northernmost extent of the gunners in the Commonwealth. The lack of any gunner positions in the northwest may simply be due to a lack of settlements, locations to salvage, or fortified positions that could function as a base of operations. Now, if we overlay this enemy leveling map, their distribution starts to make a bit more sense. The dark blue covered area is where the lowest level threats are, since the player starts in this area. Since the main quest has the player seeking out Diamond City relatively early, Northern Boston is also a low threat area, and the western part of downtown, again, where Diamond City is, is overall a lower threat than the eastern side, where we start to see a bunch of gunners. Then of course, some of the big bases are down south in the area with the most difficult enemies, so it seems that the gunners distribution in the commonwealth is more in service of isolating gunners, who are typically tougher enemies, to the more difficult parts of the map. This is a function of game design over world design. Now that we have seen the geographical distribution, let's look at the population distribution. The size of the red circles correspond to the size of the population in a given area. It's supposed to help you quickly compare how many gunners can be found in different areas. I counted the number of gunners that can be found in these locations and decided to split that number between the number of live gunners found in that location and the number of dead gunners, something I didn't do in my Super Mutants video but I wish I had, because it is rather illuminating. So the green number on top is the number of live gunners observed in an area, and the red reflects the number of dead gunners found in the area. Another important detail pertaining to how I represent these population numbers is since the exact number of gunners will vary game to game, they are not meant to represent precisely how many gunners are found. If there are more than five gunners, I round to the nearest multiple of five, so the variance can be plus or minus three. So if you go to Mass Pike Interchange and you count 12 gunners, don't come hound me in the comments. Making some quick observations here, it's easy to see that line I drew before connecting the different recon camps, because these camps are very sparsely populated, although almost all of them are bolstered by up to three robots and a sentry gun or two. The southern portion, on the other hand, has several locations and a whole host of gunners. Starting west and going east, these are Vault 95, Gunners Plaza, and Quincy Ruins. Gunners are well entrenched in these areas and are uncontested, which is seen by the lack of dead gunners. We can easily see though, that North and East Boston is a whole different story altogether. The area with the highest number of gunners is actually just one building, Green Tech Genetics. We will talk about these places individually, but the building is inaccessible due to debris near the front door until the hunter hunted quest where the player must hunt down a courser. A courser is making their way through the group of gunners in this location and is a one man wrecking crew. He kills his way entirely to the top, which is made even more impressive because this is the single largest group of gunners in the whole commonwealth. A smaller but still significant group is found just south at the Hallucigen facility. However, even if you don't know anything about the Hallucigen building and what the gunners are dealing with here, that kill to death ratio tells a very grim story. This large group of gunners, which is the second biggest in the commonwealth, is in the process of getting wiped out. The other large group of gunners seen just south and east encompasses several areas that are all connected including the Pinnacle High Rise building, the Mass Bay Medical Center, the Ticker Lounge, and some destroyed buildings. Some of the gunners in this area are fighting off a super mutant attack and taking casualties. But even so, this area is the most fortified and permanent of all the downtown areas that the gunners can be found in. I think it is worth noting that the two largest concentrations of gunners in the entire Commonwealth are both in single buildings that are active operations. 
This shows how much muscle gunners can muster when conducting operations, since their permanent bases still have a very healthy number of gunners to stay back and defend. It is also interesting to note that there are much smaller populations of gunners in the north when compared to the south and downtown Boston. And this could indicate that the gunners, if they did not originate in or around Boston, that they likely came from somewhere down south, first gaining a foothold in this area before continuing to project their power farther north. Alternatively, if they do come from the Commonwealth, then their origin might be in the southern region. This is just conjecture on my part that only really makes sense when looking at the population distribution like this. Now I want to dig into the specific locations, and let's start with the interesting ones, namely the locations that are abandoned or where gunners will soon be completely wiped out. Abandoned areas are marked in yellow, and the purple areas represent where a number of gunners can be found in 2287, but will eventually be wiped out through the course of the game through means other than the player going in and shooting up the place. First up, Green Tech Genetics. This large green building north of Boston is inaccessible to the player until a certain point in the game. The building is actually surrounded by a large group of raiders and the entrance is blocked by debris until the player needs to track down a courser and kill it for their courser chip. The courser is tracked to the Green Tech building, which is now accessible and is filled to the brim with gunners. Like I said previously, there are more gunners here, if you count living and dead, than any other single location. What is so valuable about this location that it justifies the largest single force of gunners in the Commonwealth? I asked myself this question, and since the background of Green Tech Genetics is in genetic research, surprise, surprise, and other secret experimentation, it would make sense that the research, or at least the technology used to conduct the research, would be the prime target. However, a terminal message left by the gunners makes it clear that this is a salvage mission where they are gathering materials to be sent to HQ. Well, maybe this is still referencing high-tech instruments and technology, except that the terminal message also states that they are just throwing the salvage down several floors into the lobby where it gets sorted. Okay, well maybe this is really durable technology that can be thrown down a few floors into a heap of junk. Well, looking at the pile in the lobby and the sorted piles of materials makes it pretty clear that no advanced technology seems to be targeted here. There are sheets of metal, pipe, and other such building materials that are piled in the center or organized into small piles on the periphery. This seems to be a salvage operation for building materials and other such boring items for themselves. It doesn't even seem to be a contracted job. I only say that though because the message talks about communicating with HQ to determine how much material they are looking for so that they don't accidentally take too much. That seems less like a contract salvage job and more like an internal project to recover material to be used for their own purposes. So this location makes it clear that the gunners are willing to commit some serious manpower to projects as mundane as random material salvaging. They are not just dedicated to doing large jobs for clients. I do wonder how long they've been here though, because the debris blocking the door would seem to indicate that they had arrived not long ago and cleared the debris to access the building and start scavenging, but the message makes it clear that they've been gathering a lot of materials. However, whether they have been here a short time or a long time, and whether they intend to stay and turn this building into some sort of outpost or base is largely irrelevant because of the arrival of the Institute Courser. The gunners had found a runaway synth and saw an opportunity to take a captive, which they are known to do from time to time, except this synth was being tracked by a courser. They take massive casualties from the courser, and if the player wants to make it to the top floor to confront the courser, they're forced to clean up the remaining gunners, leading to what can only be described as a total loss of the largest concentration of gunners in the entire game. This location will remain empty after the events that unfold, making it a monument to one of the greatest massacres the gunners have ever suffered. But since we're on the topic of epic massacres, 
another one is happening just a bridge away at the Hallucigen Inc. building. Before we get into those details though, close by, marked in yellow on the map, is an abandoned location that is known as the Marlboro House, which was used as an initial recon base prior to the mission to Hallucigen. According to a note that can be found, a small group was meant to scout the area ahead of the operation and take out any potential threats to make things go as smoothly as possible. There are sleeping bags and other left behind supplies that show that the gunners were here, and rather mysteriously, the body of one unfortunate gunner is also found here. When the player enters the hallucinogen building, it is immediately apparent that a catastrophe is unfolding. A green gas can be seen hanging in the air. An automated announcement is blaring, telling of a chemical breach, and gunners can be heard screaming, yelling, and seen attacking each other or just laying dead, having been killed by fellow gunners or having succumbed to the effects of the gas. The player can find a note that gives the mission parameters. The gunners are here to retrieve pre-war military tech, specifically two items called the Invisiwave and Eradicator. They are also to access the mainframe and download the schematics and salvage other targets of opportunity, all for a client that is, unfortunately, only mentioned as being classified. The entire mission appears to be completely foobar, as even the commander has succumbed to the effects of the gas and is encountered in the final laboratory room, having apparently killed some of his own men. Unfortunately, the Invisiwave and the Eradicator weapons couldn't actually be recovered. Research notes in terminals mention that the Eradicator weapon has a power supply that weighs two freaking tons and therefore is not suitable for field deployment. The Invisiwave is not any better since it is almost literally a system of smoke and mirrors. A military demo apparently made a target disappear using five mirrors, two stealth boys, and a trap door. So it's basically just a magic trick and nothing even close to an actual weapon. The other research projects were the hallucinogen gas that is currently dispersed and wreaking havoc on the gunners, and a prototype called the suppressor, which uses an electrical pulse to incapacitate targets. However, the gunners do not appear to be in any state to export these last two targets of interest, even if they wanted to. Seeing as more than half of the gunners here are dead, it is likely that there will be few, if any, survivors from this mission. And not only will this be yet another devastating blow, since it has the second most personnel of any location, but the location itself will be useless as a base of operations because of the gas. Now, this location is important because of the mission briefing that clearly lays out the objectives of the mission and the fact that it has a classified client who is bankrolling the operation. We will discuss the possible people or entities pulling the strings, as Deacon puts it, but let's continue to the next location that the gunners will lose through the course of the game. East of Hallucigen in downtown Boston and not far from the other gunner positions is the Mass Fusion Building one of the big power suppliers for the Commonwealth, who, underhandedly, was using fission technology to generate power while advertising it as fusion tech. This building is the setting for a late stage main quest. Should the player side with the Institute, they will have to retrieve the beryllium agitator to help complete phase three by installing it in the new Institute reactor, allowing it to go live. The Brotherhood, on the other hand, is there to stop the Institute and one of the more vicious and memorable battles will commence. Prior to this showdown, however, the player can approach the mass fusion building and encounter gunners. With guards posted outside and a handful of gunners inside the building, we are never given a reason for their presence. Although there are far fewer personnel here than the previous two locations, dead gunner bodies can be found when completing the mission for the Institute or Brotherhood later in the game signifying that the contingent of gunners that were here were wiped out by one of the main factions. There are no clues indicating why they were here, but considering the impressive pre-war tech that exists in the depths of this building, it is very reasonable to assume that they were on a tech scavenging mission, although it could realistically be for themselves or for a client. Regardless, the gunners lose this position through the course of the game, 
and by extension the advanced technology that is taken and recovered by either the Institute or the Brotherhood, making it yet another instance of a substantial failure in downtown Boston. The last site in downtown is a bit different because it can either be a group of gunners or a group of raiders that are encountered, but the fact that it can be gunners means it's worth mentioning. 35 Court is yet another large building in downtown Boston that is well known for being the only place in the Commonwealth where you can consistently find an entire set of X-01 power armor. The building is defended by a handful of robots, and if the player makes it to the top floor where they can find and take the power armor, they will be attacked by a sentry bot and a Soltron. Several dead gunners are found on the bottom floor just inside the building, having been bested by the robotic guards, and a few live gunners can be found outside, either unaware of the fate of the team inside of the building, or just waiting for further instructions. The advanced power armor at the top of the building is the most likely target, since we see a little later that the gunners are willing to coordinate missions specifically to recover power armor and weapons for their own use. Let's leave downtown Boston and head north to Vault 75. Located under Malden Middle School, this vault's experiment centered around genetic modification, specifically geared towards modifying genes of embryos. After gestation and birth, the genetically modified humans would be rigorously tracked and tested in order to determine what changes yielded the greatest results. Those that showed the most promise were harvested, likely meaning that they were killed, and the progress that was made would be iterated on for the next generation. Those that failed the tests would be culled, and those that showed higher intellect would be brought into the research group to help further the experimentation. The fate of the vault isn't entirely known. Some terminal messages hint toward an organized rebellion on the part of those being tested, but whether this was successful or not, we don't know, and whether the vault was abandoned or not is also unknown. But at some point, gunners came into possession of the vault and can be found there in 2287. There are no indications of when or why the gunners are holding Vault 75, although the technology and research being done by the vault could be a reason for them to be there, and also vaults are really great fortified positions that can allow the gunners to have a defendable base of operations, so that could also justify their presence. However, after the events of the main quest, the gunners that are here will get massacred and replaced by one of the other main factions. Who ends up occupying the vault depends on who the player decides to support in the end game. So if you supported the Institute or the Railroad, the surviving Brotherhood of Steel will have taken the vault by force. Alternatively, if the player aided the Brotherhood or the Minutemen in the end game, then Institute Synths will have wiped out the gunners and occupy the vault. It doesn't matter who the player chooses to side with, the gunners in this location will be wiped out by one of the main factions who may be similarly interested in this location due to the technology, the research, or the fortified position that it holds. There is no indication that gunners are here for a job or to fulfill a contract, and the fact that this vault is sought after by other major factions show that it is a desirable target so it is likely that the gunners are here for their own purposes. This location has the highest concentration of gunners in the northern part of the map, although it is substantially lower than most downtown Boston areas or holdings in the south. So even at their strongest and most established location in the north, they still just don't have that many people. Now this is also where it's important to bring up that there is a fan theory that the Gunners are actually the descendants of the genetically modified test subjects of Vault 75. It could explain why they are such a force to be reckoned with and particularly dangerous, as well as why they are even in Vault 75 in the first place. However, it is important to clarify that this is just a fan theory, and unfortunately, there is no other evidence that substantiates this, other than the circumstantial evidence that I just mentioned. I would say, however, that the low population in this vault, and in the north in general, would lead me to believe that they did not originate from this area and spread here to the rest of the commonwealth. The Museum of Witchcraft in the northeast is a memorable location and site of a gunner massacre. Although this location wasn't used as any sort of base, 
the gunners did try to use it for refuge from a monster that was stalking them, although it appears it didn't help much. A group of gunners led by Major Jeffries was paid to transport a package of unknown origin or contents from Lynn Woods up north and meant to go all the way down to Diamond City. Around the area of the Museum of Witchcraft, they realized that they are being hunted by a Deathclaw and scrambled to the nearby museum to fight off their would-be attacker. They did not stand a chance against the Deathclaw as it ripped through the entire group and it wasn't until the last surviving member found that they were actually transporting a Deathclaw egg that he finally understood why they were being so doggedly pursued by this Deathclaw. Sergeant Lee was the last one alive and left a holotape message where he admitted regret, saying that if he knew that they were tasked with transporting a Deathclaw egg, he would have told his superiors to turn down the offer. These Deathclaw eggs are hard to come by because of how dangerous they are to procure, and as a result, only the wealthiest residents can afford to pay the high price that the gunners demand for their services. That makes this location different from the others though, because it never was a base of any sort, but it is now a tomb. The last location that sees a big change is the Parsons State Insane Asylum because the player can encounter a group of mercenary gunners just outside of this building, although this is not a base of operations. They are employed by Edward Deegan and by extension Jack Cabot, the scientist who is keeping his father imprisoned in the basement of the asylum while he tries to discover a way to remove the supernatural crown that his father wears. While there are only a few gunners that can be found outside of the entrance, there is very likely more inside keeping a close eye on the building and who has access to the prison where Lorenzo Cabot resides. However many there actually are, Advancing the secret of Cabot House quest will lead to the killing of all the gunner mercenaries by a group of raiders that have had their minds infiltrated by Lorenzo Cabot and who he is using to try and set him free. This means that by the end of the game, the only remaining areas in the northeast are a super small recon base and the Hub City Auto Wrecker base. All other groups operating in this area are wiped out and they lose their Vault 75 base as well, which is a big setback for them in a part of the Commonwealth where they don't have a large presence anyway. So, as a recap of the losses that the group takes by the end of the game, the Gunners lose control of the Green Tech Genetics building, the Hallucigen building, and the Mass Fusion building, and in the process, suffer total or near total losses of those groups. And we can estimate those losses at around 80 or so personnel which is almost half of the total population in the Commonwealth that I counted, which is around 158. If we also count the losses that are incurred by losing Vault 75, the gunners killed in the Museum of Witchcraft, and a conservative estimate for the losses at Parsons State Insane Asylum, that brings the total losses to around 110. I don't care who you are. A 70% loss and reduction in manpower and population is a devastating blow and could have implications for whether the gunners could realistically continue as a serious force in the wasteland. Now it's worth it to look at each of the locations that we haven't discussed yet. Locations that, as far as we know, will stay in control of the gunners, at least for the foreseeable future. These locations have interesting lore have relations with other locations and groups, and give us great insight into the organization itself. Since I mentioned the Hub City Auto Wrecker location as the only surviving base in the Northwest by the time the game ends, let's start there. This location, as the name implies, was an auto wrecker company where they collected and processed discarded vehicles, and according to the terminals, did so rather sloppily. They were mishandling nuclear material from the cars that were coming in but that is largely inconsequential for the current occupants. It is not known when they took control of the location, but they rigged a crane to allow them to get onto the adjacent elevated highway, which is a tactic they employ all over the Commonwealth. The elevated position gives them a good vantage point and it is easier for them to defend from an elevated position. There is no other reason for them being in this location other than they can fight from the high ground and may be able to salvage tech from all the old vehicles that are found here. 
they likely wanted to establish a base in this part of the wasteland and saw this as one of the better options, because they are actually doing a lot of recon from this position. A terminal states their recon efforts in several messages. They had a fellow gunner pose as a traitor to get details about the long neck Lukowski's cannery, and are considering killing Theodore Collins, the meat merchant that lives and works there. However, they note that they do not have someone with the technical skills to keep the facility running, and therefore do not think that they should make a move on the facility, but are leaving the ultimate decision up to the lieutenant, some unnamed leader. They did recon at the Dunwich Borer Quarry, where the forged are extracting metal and other salvage, although the gunners seem to think that the raiders in this location are either a feeder group for the forged, or have an arrangement with them to sell or trade salvage. They note that the high number of raiders would require reinforcements if they wanted to take the position. Lastly, they have done recon south in the Revere area, noting a satellite array, but somehow not noticing the super mutant force there, as well as the raider group occupying the Revere metro station. They conclude that even though the raider force is substantial, they don't deem them a threat, because the bridge that separates them is a substantial enough choke point that they could stop or stall any aggressive actions by the raiders. Lastly, while this isn't documented in the terminal, we know that the forged and the gunners here have had a violent confrontation after Slag, the forged leader, convinced a number of gunners to defect and join the raider group. However, the forged were able to put the gunners in their place, and ever since there has been an uneasy truce between the two, although in game it is not uncommon to see them start taking pot shots at each other. Since they are hemmed in on the west and north by the forged, and the south by super mutants and the Revere Metro Raiders, realistically the only expansion that the group could reasonably pull off would probably be the small peninsula with the remains of Salem, since there is a group of Children of Adam directly east, but only a handful of Mirelurks and a lone survivor, Barney Rook, inhabiting the Salem area. That could allow them to govern a larger area, something maybe like this. They could potentially also take the Nahant area, but with the exception of a small military outpost, there isn't much else here, and the proximity to the Libertalia Raiders and the ease with which they could be cut off from the rest of the gunner groups would make it risky. This location is associated with some radiant quests, namely Kidnapping and Lost Soul, which shows that they are actively kidnapping and holding people for ransom, a great gunner pastime. There are also some Brotherhood-related quests, Cleansing the Commonwealth, which tasks the player with wiping out this group, and Quarter Mastery, which tasks the player with recovering technology, so this location seems to have desirable tech, and may explain one reason why the Gunners are here. Let's look south in downtown Boston now, an area where the Gunners actually are NOT getting their asses kicked. Well, they kind of are, but it's not as bad as Green Tech or Hallucigen. There is an area called Postal Square that is separate from the larger area that is also held by gunners, but it's worth noting for a few reasons. The first is that this is the only location where we see gunners with livestock. Okay, that's not all that groundbreaking, but gunners are just not seen with farms, livestock, or anything like that. They actively raid since they have been seen attacking settlements, but they may also do some buying and trading for resources as well. The only other interesting detail about this location comes from the Vault Dweller's Survival Guide, which states that this outpost is specifically to stop super mutant incursions from the south. But this isn't the most southernmost point in Boston. In fact, there's a group of super mutants that are attacking an adjacent gunner stronghold. So this statement from the Survival Guide seems ill-informed when looking at things from a bird's eye view. Now, the large stronghold to the west of Postal Square consists of several areas, all controlled by gunners. The northernmost building is Pinnacle High Rise, where a battle is raging. Super Mutants control an adjacent skyscraper, Hub 360, and the Super Mutants have traveled along an elevated highway from that building to Pinnacle High Rise and started attacking from the top. All the gunners on floor 21, which is the top floor, are dead, and the super mutants have made it down to floor 11, where they are actively fighting gunners. Gunners also occupy a lower level, the 6th floor, 
so the building is not completely under super mutant control. The elevated highway connects to a number of derelict buildings which have a smattering of gunners, and these rooftops and catwalks eventually lead to the Mass Bay Medical Center. This large hospital is occupied by a considerable number of gunners, but there is no known reason for their occupation outside of just establishing themselves in this part of downtown. There exists the chance that they are also interested in what medical supplies they can scavenge, or maybe even technology, but the hospital was already having to ration resources not long after the Great War because of the high number of injured people. So that endeavor may not be as fruitful as they would hope, if that is indeed why they're there. Mass Bay connects directly to another location, the Ticker Tape Lounge, which has only a handful of gunners and really no other importance other than it is close to Mass Bay and also has an exit onto the same elevated highway portion that connects to Pinnacle High Rise and other gunner held rooftops. This whole combined area represents the greatest holdings of the gunners, but they don't seem to be making much progress in expanding their influence seeing as their excursion to mass fusion will end in disaster and they are currently fending off what seems to be a partially successful super mutant attack at Pinnacle High Rise. It is hard to tell what may happen with the bases here, but they will likely be on the defense for a while with so many other losses in the rest of downtown. A small military outpost south of downtown has a blink and you'll miss it gunner encounter. Around two or three gunners are here inside the small bunker where a military message is still being played on loop with military hardware and soldier skeletons scattered about. They haven't fortified this area and seem to instead be interested in what they can find in the bunker. With this being such a small location, I doubt this will become an outpost of any kind. Rather, this is just a small expedition to investigate this old checkpoint. Now the southern portion gets really interesting because we have some big bases with a lot of history and lore. Let's start with a doozy, the Quincy Ruins, one of the most recent gunner acquisitions that we know of. Sometime in 2287, when Fallout 4 starts, gunners attacked the settlement that was located in the Quincy Ruins. The settlement called for help, and a small group of Minutemen answered their call and helped keep the gunners at bay. The gunners laid siege, and neither side made much progress until Clint, one of the Minutemen commanders, defected to the gunners. He helped them devise a plan where the gunners could get on the adjacent elevated highway, and from this new position, they were able to overcome the settlers and the Minutemen. A small group of Minutemen was able to escape, and they traveled west and north, looking for a place to settle until they got cornered in Concord at the Museum of Freedom. Yes, that group that escaped what became known as the Quincy Massacre was none other than Preston Garvey and company. The gunners took a bunch of prisoners as well, and Clint was given command of the gunners in this area for having betrayed the Minutemen and devising the plan that won them the settlement. Clint is still there, commanding his detachment, but the gunners under his command are growing restless, and became particularly unhappy after some of the captives they had somehow escaped. One notable gunner, Tessa, doesn't trust Clint since he so easily betrayed his former Minutemen and was rewarded with commanding the group when people like Tessa herself have been showing loyalty to the gunners for much, much longer. Due to this, Lieutenant Clint has tried to keep his gunners busy by scouting surrounding areas. They have investigated the Automatoys factory just to the west but due to the heavy super mutant presence, they decided to not actively pursue that location. They also scouted the Quincy Quarry, which has a group of raiders living there, but have decided against any action, except for firing a few rockets towards them to show them who's boss. Lastly, they noted the presence of the Atom Cats to the northeast, and of course took particular interest in their power armor. I mean, can you blame them? Look at that paint job. If the player helps the Atom Cats, there will come a point where the cats will come under a gunner attack and the player helps the cats defend their garage. So this seems to be an ill-fated attempt by Lieutenant Clint and his group of gunners to get their bread hooks on the Atom Cats plates. You dig? Bread hooks, you know? Hands? <laughs> what a square. Although that attempt failed, it is obvious that if Lieutenant Clint wants to retain command, he will need to claim some victories and keep his men satisfied. 
They are kind of cornered though, with the closest combat options being the Atom Cats, the Raiders at the Quarry, the Super Mutants at the Factory, and more Raiders to the east in the Poseidon Energy Plant. The Quarry doesn't offer much of anything. The Factory may have some technology, the Atom Cats of course have their power armor, and the Power Plant may also have some technology, but all of those options will require well-planned and executed attacks since there will be stiff opposition. An attack like what they did at the Atom Cat's garage is just not going to cut it, and Clint might become increasingly desperate. Let me know what you think Lieutenant Clint should do to start scoring some wins here. The only quest associated with Quincy is given by the Brotherhood to try and rid the Commonwealth of threats through the Cleansing the Commonwealth quest. So the operation to take Quincy seems like a purely self-serving one for the Gunners. They saw a chance to take a whole area and the inhabitants, and they took it. Not far west of Quincy is the headquarters of the entire organization, according to a Fallout 4 loading screen. So-called Gunners Plaza used to be called GNN Plaza as it was a large broadcasting station, and the Gunners are using that functionality to allow them to communicate over large distances and coordinate operations. As such, the facility has a lot of Gunners, robots, and a crapload of sentry guns and they are all very heavily armed. The highest level commander is Captain Wes, although it is unknown if he is truly the highest leader or if he reports to an unknown superior. Some terminal entries talk about two operations and their rather interesting results. The first is an infiltration operation that is underway in the Raider group that occupies nearby Hyde Park. One or possibly more gunners have gone undercover to infiltrate the group and pose as raiders. Originally meant to just gather intel, rumors started flying in the raider group about infiltrators, and it has caused enough chaos that Captain Wes suspended plans to try and extract the undercover gunners. He believes the amount of confusion and violence that has stemmed from this operation might be enough for the raiders to all but destroy themselves, ridding them of a nearby rival group. There have also been recon missions north to the Fallon's department store a location that, not long ago, was occupied by raiders, but has since fallen into the hands of super mutants. On one particular mission, a commander known as Cruz was in charge and gathering intel when his group encountered an ambush, presumably by super mutants. Wes directly ordered Cruz to retreat, much to Cruz's surprise, but he obeyed the order and withdrew. Back at the headquarters, Wes used Cruz's retreat as the pretext for taking him off recon duty and back to guard duty, something that confused Cruz, but he knew better than to question Wes directly. This is an interesting interaction since the holotape that recorded the exchange is locked away in a safe owned by Wes. He doesn't want this information to come out. I see a few reasons why this may have happened. The first may be that Wes didn't like Cruz and so he set him up, allowing him to reprimand Cruz for retreating something that gunners never do, according to many in the Commonwealth, and take him off recon duty. Alternatively, Wes may have been concerned at losing this group to an ambush, and in order to save face, made it seem like the retreat was Cruz's idea. This seems more plausible when we consider the heavy losses that the group is experiencing at this time, mostly in the downtown area. The gunners at the HQ are heavily involved in kidnapping activities according to the Radiant quests for this location, as well as Brotherhood quests to destroy all the gunners in this area, to escort a scribe to the plaza, and lastly a mission to recover technology from here. The only immediate threats are the super mutants up north, the raiders in Hyde Park, which are in a weakened state, and then other locations with creatures that they could probably clear out if they wanted to, like the Suffolk County Charter School filled with pink ghouls. There are whole swaths of land without any potent threats, and they could conceivably control an area as large as this with regular patrols. However, with their recent win in Quincy and the weakening of raiders at Hyde Park, I think it would be extremely beneficial to coordinate with the Quincy gunners to eliminate enemies between these two locations. This would allow easy transport, coordination, and greater control over this area allowing the gunners to turn their combined forces toward other targets, either completely moving east or working north.
Also, I have to say, I think it's more than a coincidence that the old GNN Plaza is the headquarters of the Gunners. GNN. Gunner. Someone from the GNN building would be a GNNer. Gunner. A Gunner. All right, moving on. Once again, just west of the Gunners Plaza is another well fortified and manned base Vault 95. Gunners seem to like vaults, don't they? Vault 95 was a social experiment vault that only let those suffering from chem addictions to get placement in the vault. Once the war broke out, many of these addicts were enrolled in a vault tech program to help them recover from their addiction. This program went on for five years and by all measures was quite a success with seemingly all residents successfully recovering from their addiction, which may had something to do with the fact that they didn't have access to chems anymore. There was a catch, however, as there often is, and five years into the program, someone uncovered a huge cache of chems in the middle of the night, left to be discovered by the residents. Once the trove was discovered, all hell broke loose. Some people immediately relapsed and took as much as they could get their hands on. Some pled with their friends to stick to the program, while another contingent grew angry at a very obvious setup on the part of vault -Tec. Amongst all this chaos was violence, overdoses, and death, but exactly how it all ended is unknown. The Vault Dweller's survival guide mentions that the gunners invaded and overwhelmed Vault 95, but this raises some questions. Did the residents of Vault 95 survive much longer than it seems they would, given the incredible violence and breakdown that happened after the chems were released? That would imply that the gunners came at a later date and that the vault dwellers lasted a good amount of time in the vault. Remember, this stash was revealed only five years after the vault was sealed, so there is just over 200 years between when the chems were revealed and when Fallout 4 takes place. Or are the gunners as an organization much older and they invaded the vault not long after the stash was uncovered? I would really like to hear what you think in the comments. The vault makes sense as a target for the gunners since it has advanced technology, chems, and a fortified position that is close to their headquarters. There is no reference to why they took this position, and while it is possible it was part of a contract mission, I think it is more likely that this was a self-serving operation to take the vault. Unlike the gunners at Gunner Plaza, there are no kidnapping quests associated with this location just Brotherhood quests to wipe out the gunners and recover technology. This location is more hemmed in due to being right on the edge of the glowing sea and some super mutants directly north. It would be even easier for Vault 95 and Gunners Plaza to control the territory between the two locations because they are closer than the plaza is to Quincy and there are fewer organized enemy groups. I think it is entirely plausible that with regular patrols, they could cover an area like this, and this makes the gunner position in the south look even stronger, and why I think solidifying their hold of this area could provide such a strong position that any other groups would have a lot of difficulty opposing them. North and west a bit is the Mass Pike Interchange, a mess of elevated highways that the gunners, once again, have taken advantage of. Of course they have. I mean, can you name a better combo than gunners and elevated positions? This medium-sized base has two commanders that we meet in Good Neighbor when they confront McCready in the third rail and tell him to stop taking jobs in their territory. One of my favorite lines from this interaction though is when one of them, Winlock, tells the former gunner McCready that they are not killing him there in Good Neighbor because they respect boundaries. Did they tell that to the people at Quincy? Gunners don't seem to have respect for anyone unless they think that cooperating is more lucrative than outright violence. McCready seems to hint as much when he tells the sole survivor that, at the end of the day, the gunners are only worried about the bottom line and nothing else. So long as it is more beneficial to earn money through escorting, guarding, and performing operations, the gunners will refrain from just coming in and taking what they want. At least they're not wise enough to kill the golden goose, I guess. Although we don't know what rank Winlock and Barnes have, they are the commanders of the Mass Turnpike base. McCready isn't the only one that is sick of those two commanders though. One gunner known as Zachariah was under their command 
and eventually grew sick of taking orders from them and escaped. He made his way to Nuka World, where he set up at the Grand Chester Mystery Mansion. There is another gunner, whose body we find in the Nuka World Gauntlet, who escaped an unnamed gunner base when their leader, who is referred to as Sarge, killed a subordinate for backtalking. He escaped and went west, finding himself at the Nuka World Transit Center, and made his way to the Gauntlet. Although we don't know what the rank of Winlock and Barnes are, it is possible that he is yet another gunner that tried to escape their leadership, and given their western location, this would be feasible and would also fit a pattern. Their base is in a fairly empty part of the Commonwealth, and even though their numbers are much smaller than other bases, they could probably cover a decent sized area, coming short of the locations with raiders, super mutants, or large groups of ghouls. Something like this wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility, but again, this location has around 10 personnel, so they are unlikely to be able to cover a considerable area and are probably more geared towards recon and some light missions. The last location that we will look at is not a base of operations, and the gunners have just recently arrived. Drawn by the Nuka World radio signal, a group of gunners were dispatched to the Nuka World Transit Center, where part of their objective is to figure out why the radio signal went live and if this is connected to a missing group of gunners that investigated this area some time prior. As such, this small group is little more than a speed bump for the sole survivor, who themselves are investigating the signal and make their way to Nuka World. The command to investigate was given by a Colonel Cypress, a leader whose location is unknown, but it would only make sense that they are not that far away, so maybe it's a group organized from the handful of small recon bases that are close by in this northern part of the map. There are two locations that have been expressly said to be of interest to the gunners. The first is the Nuka World Transit Center that we spoke of, especially after they had a group of gunners go missing in this area. The second area of interest, marked in white, is Fort Hagen. A gunner known as Sergeant Marks was sent to scout Fort Hagen as a possible location of interest, but ended up at the Nuka World Transit Center where she died in the gauntlet. It makes sense that Fort Hagen would be a desirable target for the gunners given the strong position and plethora of technology and supplies, but it would not be even a remote possibility until Kellogg is killed, and even then the Institute may still use the fort for surface operations. And with only those two locations being stated as areas of interest, I thought of just a few locations that would be of interest to gunners if they knew their existence or could realistically be contracted to go and retrieve technology or research from. ArcJet Systems has interesting enough technology that both Paladin Dance and the Institute go there to retrieve the deep range transmitter. Since gunners seem to like vaults, it's somewhat curious that they haven't taken Vault 81, since they apparently pushed out the inhabitants of Vault 95, so we know they have no problems with that. Maybe they earn enough money from protecting traders and caravans to and from Vault 81 to not make it worth it. Vault 88 is hidden, but dangerously close to the Quincy Gunners and not that far away from Gunners Plaza, and if the sole survivor can uncover it, I'm sure the Gunners could as well. They'd be very interested in yet another strong position in the south and the materials and supplies that they could scavenge from it. A scavenging mission or contract mission to Cambridge Polymer Labs seems appropriate due to the cutting edge tech that can be found there. I find it a little weird that there's been no interest on the Gunners part in this area of southeast Boston. There's a General Atomics factory that would have no shortage of supplies and tech, and the castle that would represent another heavily fortified position to make a base out of. There are plenty of areas that they could be potentially interested in, and I would like to hear any that I didn't mention and why you think so. Lastly, the Sentinel site that I mentioned before is filled to the brim with nuclear weaponry and other such technology, and anyone looking to bolster their arsenal could contract the gunners to make their way into the glowing sea and recover some of these resources. So after all of this, we haven't really answered the question that we spoke about at the beginning. Deacon alludes to someone pulling the strings behind the gunner organization, and it is really easy to compare the gunners to Talon Company from Fallout 3, who has a similarly mysterious background. This is where I, your Fallout-loving Rad King, says that after reviewing all the information, that I don't think that there is a mysterious individual or group behind the scenes. I think there are enough differences between the Gunners and Talon Company that we can say with confidence that the Gunners are self-motivated to get richer, claim more territory, and exert more influence 
just to serve their own selfish goals. Whereas Talon Company is given a blanket order to take out any do-gooders in the Commonwealth by some unknown client who is obviously quite wealthy and has some opaque reasoning for the request, the Gunners have no such nebulous directive. Gunners aren't hurting people because they're good. They take contracts to salvage, protect, or kill specific targets, and that's it. Although there are some gunners that won't shoot the player on sight, they will usually immediately engage the player in combat, like Talon Company. However, unlike Talon Company, gunners make their intentions known for attacking the player. They will shout, I hope there's a bounty on you, so their aggression serves two purposes. One, it enforces their territory, and two, it is apparently worth the violence to roll the dice and kill someone in the hopes that they have a bounty. When Talon Company is found just fighting out in the ruins of DC, there is never any information as to what their mission objective is. The Gunners, on the other hand, have clear orders, whether that is to extract certain desired items, to scavenge for materials, or to transport an item. There is a reason. Talon Company lacks these clear logical goals, contracts, and missions. Lastly, the number of potential backers for Talon Company are rather immense. The Enclave would have good reason to sow discord among the Capital Wasteland. Slavers would benefit from unstable communities so they could just kidnap people at their discretion. Then we have an individual who is enormously wealthy and capable of incredible destruction, Alistair Tenpenny, who instructs Mr. Burke to detonate the Megaton Bomb because it obstructs his view? There are no analogs in Fallout 4 for these groups. The Institute is the big bad and would benefit from paying gunners to undergo missions, but they have their own synth armies they use instead. They wanted research from University Point and sent their synths to recover it, massacring everyone in the process. They wanted the deep range transmitter and sent synths there too, who successfully got it until you ruined their mission. There is no reason for them to fork over money to the gunners. For a job, they can and obviously do perform themselves to great effect. So if the big bad of the Commonwealth isn't funding them, and there's no obviously mega wealthy and despicable human akin to Alistair Tenpenny that could finance their efforts, that doesn't really leave any reasonable group left. The Gunners have recon camps, salvage missions, are seen protecting caravans, guarding Parsons State Asylum, and approaching the sole survivor to buy a fridge ghoul child for caps. They make more logical sense as an organization that is trying to grow in power and caps whereas Talon Company is just killing everyone, always, with no rhyme or reason, and following the orders of a shadowy client to just kill good people. The Gunners are not as fleshed out as I would like, and there certainly is a mystery as to who the real boss of the whole organization is, if it isn't Wes. But they make a great deal more sense and are more logical than Talon Company, which we should all be grateful for. What is the future of the Gunners? It's hard to say, but with the kinds of losses we know they sustain from the course of the game, they will be on their back foot. If the Brotherhood of Steel gains control of the Commonwealth, they are assuredly going to be wiped out, since the Brotherhood has already started operations against the Gunners. The Brotherhood does not like any group that can challenge them. Should the Institute win the ending conflict, there is a chance that they will largely ignore the Gunners, taking them out only when deemed necessary like in Vault 75. The Railroad will likely not care too much about the Gunners, since they typically do not interfere with their mission of saving synths, except for when they happen to unknowingly abduct a synth. There is very bad blood between the Minutemen and the Gunners, and the Minutemen will very likely start a campaign against the Gunners, since they directly threaten the safety of settlements. This will also be the Minuteman's best shot at taking out the Gunners, since they are the strongest they have ever been for a very long time should the player end the game with them, and the Gunners will be weakened by their losses. But the fighting will likely be intense and drawn out, much longer than the Brotherhood of Steel's campaign of extermination. So that is it, brothers and sisters, I would love to hear your thoughts about anything I discussed. Do you agree with my assessment? If not, give me some good comments. And if the evidence is good enough, I'm more than willing to change my mind. I want to take this moment to thank my patrons. They are the crackle in my Geiger counter and the source of nearly limitless energy. 
that help me produce these videos at the pace that I do. If you would like to join their elite ranks, I would be so ever grateful. I also want to thank Pig for helping create the cartographer, and to show that appreciation, I want to plug his mod, Loaded Bases. It is a quest mod that has you tracking down a chem trade that leads to more sinister things in the Commonwealth. Check it out if you like a quality quest mod, and thanks again to Pig. I do have some news, and that is that I will not be doing my comment highlights for at least a little bit. As the number of comments grow, it becomes increasingly difficult to parse through them while also getting these videos out on time, so I'll be thinking of another way I can engage with you guys. Say farewell to the cartographer because he's off to survey areas for the next video. In the meantime, stay true to Adam's word, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next week.